to Isaiah today, book of Isaiah in chapter 40. An exchange life is what I want us to look at. And there's, uh, we're going to read in verses uh, 27 through 31, but we're really going to focus on verse 31. An exchange life today. Father, we just go into this word and we know that you're going to bless it. God, this is your word today, and Father, as you just move us out of the way, dear God, and you just come and hide me at that cross, at the foot of the cross, Father, that I will be able to speak the words not of mine but of yours, and Father, that they will be of clear understanding that we can take this word today and let it apply so deeply into our lives that we apply that to this world, dear Father. The way we live and the way, dear Father, uh, that we, we conduct ourselves among people that needs to know and see Jesus, Father. A lot of times we are the onlyest Bible that people read. We're the onlyest thing, the onlyest thing that they really see or the onlyest person that they really see uh, that shows a, a godly life. So, Father, let us do that at 100% as we exchange lives today in the name of Jesus and amen. And it simply says, Why do you say, O Jacob, and complain, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. In his understanding, no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles, and they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. An exchanged life. An exchange life as we look in, in verse 27, it starts out, Why do you say, O Jacob, why do you complain, O Israel? Why do you? And, and, the, and what we want to look at here is, my way is hidden from the Lord. My way is hidden from the Lord. And this is the Israelites that's yelling out and, they're, and they're, they're complaining and griping and grumbling. They're scattered all out among the land at this period of time. And they're griping and grumbling and complaining about, oh, I, you, know, you know the story when you look into the Israelites. And you know how they, they were wanting to be set free. And, then, and they started out on the journey and then they run out of water. They run out of food. And then they wanted to go back into captivity. They wanted to go back into the life that they had in and, 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 and then here they griping and grumbling, but, but, but Isaiah is telling them, this is, what, this is what it boils down, is what they're telling Elijah as he's talking to them, and he's listening to, to their concerns and what they're talking about, and they said, you know what, this is really what it is, why my ways is hidden from the Lord. In other words, they're saying, you know what, uh, uh, Isaiah, you know, God just doesn't understand. He doesn't know my situation. Anybody ever been there? Come on, raise your hands. I, I, I've said, Lord, you, you just don't understand. You just don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what problem that, that I've got. God, you just don't know. See, you're not walking in my shoes. Uh, oh, maybe you are, God. <laughs> Maybe that is you that's making my feet move. I, I thought it was my brain, but, but I, yeah, maybe, you, God, yeah, yeah. Uh. Okay, God, it is you, but you know, you just really don't understand because you know, if you was if you was really here in the flesh with me, then then you wouldn't let me be in the situation that I'm in. And and and, and he always speaks back and said, I might not be there in the flesh, but I'm there in the spirit. Matter of fact, every time that, that a pulse leaves your brain, I'm the one that gives the strength to the pulse to move in your life. Oh, but God, we, you know, we complain and we gripe and we grumble about so many things and so many different situations and so many circumstances in our life. And, and, and it continues and it continues to, to cause problems for us. But it's not that that's causing the problem. It's me itself. It's the one that I see in the mirror that causes that problem and causes that situation to turn out. God, you just don't know my situation. He says, yeah, Rex, I know all about your situation. He said, but the thing is, is you don't know me. You don't know me like I want you to know me. You, you, you're, not putting, you, you, you're not putting your strength in me. You're not, oh, Rex, if you would just, if you would just, if I would just what, God? 
If you would just exchange your life for my life. If you would just exchange and exchange your situation for my situation. If you would do this and then I, I can assure you I will help you. And as I, Isaiah told him. He says, don't you know? He said, the Lord. Have you not heard the Lord is the everlasting God? He's the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired and weary. You know, this is a lifestyle that we live in. Anybody wake up tired? You just wake up. You're tired when you wake up than when you went to bed. Our, our minds is just going. Doo -doo 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 -doo. It's going here to yonder, there, and there. It's everywhere. We go to bed with more on our mind than, than, than what we really and truly should go to bed with on our minds, church. We're bombarded by this world because we're depending on this world. We're depending on the things that we encounter during the day and during the nights and during our times on the job or times in our pleasure to give us that feeling that, that we desire to have. But, but we, need to, we need to not grow tired and weary in our own self, but let God do the one. To be the one to do the tired and the weary in our lives. He says they will not grow tired and weary. He gives strength to the weary and he increases the power of the weak. Even youths, everybody gets tired. Everybody gets tired. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. We all make those mistakes. We all have the mistakes in our life. But as we move on down to verse 31. But those. But those. But those who hope in the Lord. But those who hope in the Lord, and let us take this word hope right here, and let us look at this word hope today. But those who hope in the Lord, those who stay in the Lord, those who are rooted in the Lord, not only rooted in the Lord, but those who are grounded in the Lord. But those who are grounded in the Lord. But those who are rooted in the Lord. Those who stay still in the Lord. Those, every one of us, we will just stay still in the Lord. If we will be grounded in the Lord. If we will be rooted in the Lord. Then what happens if we do that? You mean, if I will just get grounded in God Almighty, in His Son, Jesus Christ. If I get grounded, I get rooted in Him, what's, what, what's going to happen? He will renew their strength. He will renew their strength. Now we've got to take that word renew, and that word renew, what does it mean? What is He really saying? But those that will be grounded in the Lord or rooted in the Lord, He will renew their strength. In other words, He will take that renew and, and He will exchange it. He will exchange, if other words, I take what my strength is and the things that I can do in my strength is very limited. I, I can pick up this speaker. It might hurt my back, but I can pick it up. I, I can pick up this strength with the strength that I have, pick up this speaker and turn it around. But you see, that's a limitation on my strength. And, and God can not only take and pick up this speaker and tote it around, He can pick up this church and tote it around. He can pick up this church and turn it around. Oh, Lord, have mercy. He says, I hold the whole world in my hands. I got the whole world in my hands, church. You know, if we will take in the trials and the tribulations and the grappling and the grumbling, and that's what Isaiah was telling the Israelites all this time that you're trying to handle this situation. If you will exchange yourself and move yourself out of the way and let God in and let Him work the situation, then you won't be as tired and you'll be able to walk a little bit further than what you're able to walk on your own. Church, the Lord have mercy. Man, I just need to stay in the Lord. I need to be fixed in the Lord. I just need to be grounded in the Lord. I just need to be rooted in the Lord. I just need to find myself grounded and rooted and stayed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, my gracious. But I kind of get out of whack, you know. I mean, that's the easy way. I like to make things hard. Uh, anybody agree with me? I just simple stuff. Why do you want to stay with simple stuff? I mean, that's boring, right? Mm -hmm. No, the real simple stuff 
is to be rooted in the Lord. The real, real simple stuff. You see, we do the hard stuff. We do the hard stuff the hard way. Because here, the Israelite children were trying to make their way and go their way, and they were trying to do this and do that, and everything was turning upside down for them because they was doing it in their strength. If we would do it in God's strength and let God tote us around, let God give us the answers, let God take care of the problem, let God do what God needs to do instead of me and you trying to do it the way that we want to do it, let's exchange. It says we were new. Let's exchange our strength. And, and they will soar on the wings like eagles. And we will soar. You know, the eagle is so fascinating. The eagle can do so many great, wonderful things. Just picture yourself walking through 60 mile an hour winds. Picture yourself walking around in 100 mile an hour winds. Picture yourself just walking in, uh, in all this wind and doing all that. You, know, you know how it just push against you and push against you. You see, imagine an eagle up there soaring in 100 miles an hour wind. No, they don't soar in the wind, they create the wind. In that troubled air, the eagle flies way above it. it. It goes above where that troubled air is, and it just soars. It just floats around up there because it's not in the, in the air. It's, it's got all this trouble in it. Have you ever rode on an airplane, and all of a sudden you drop down about 100 feet, just like boom, and you just thought the world was coming to an end. You see, that's troubled air, but the eagle don't fly in that. The eagle goes above that. The eagle finds a way to get under it or above it, and they soar so high. And then they can dive at 100 miles an hour. They create the 100 mile an hour wind. They create that. But that's where me and you will get in this troubled air. We get in a troubled situation, and we fight against it, and fight against it, and fight against it. And God said, hey, you quit fighting and let me come in and let me ease it up. Let me take care of the problem. Let me take care of the situation because you're going to get tired. You're going to get tired. Oh, I just can't fight no more. Lord, I just can't. Ain't fight no more. And finally you get to that spot and say, God, it's over. I'm going to lay here and die. I'm just going to die. I'm going to die, Lord. And he says, no, you're not. Get up out of that grave, Lazarus. Get up out of that grave. Come back to life. Come back to life. Dead bones in the sea. Dead bones out in the desert. Y'all get up and come back together. Get you some life. Do it. And exchange what you got for what the Lord's got. Anybody, would y'all want to exchange with me? Would you want to exchange with the person beside you? Would you want to exchange your life for anybody else in here? God said, I don't want you to exchange with nobody else except me. I want to renew. I want to renew. I want, because I want you to soar like the eagle soars. You know what? And I want you to be able to run and not to grow weary. I don't want you to be in here when you're getting tired. I don't want you to, I don't want you to be here where, where you're so out of whack. I just don't want that. You know, we become very tired with the busy way of life that we have. It's just this weekend we've been in conversations and I'm sure that other families have been in the same conversation. Just talk about the old times. Talk about the old times, how things used to be, to where you just sat around as a family and talked and carried on and had a good time. And your neighbors show up and the other neighbors show up. And then all of a sudden, everybody goes into the kitchen. All the ladies, while the men sitting out there, uh, whittling the stick and propping their feet up and taking a nap in the hammock, the wives is in the kitchen cooking up. On a wood stove, yeah. Y'all don't forget, man had to cut wood. <laughs> but it was a simple way of life. It was a simple thing. It was, it, was it was where it was more family oriented. It was where that you didn't get as tired. It was where we didn't have as many activities going on. It was where that you just was not quite as tired. You see, you don't have to physically work, work, work all day long with a shovel and a, a hoe and a rake or, or being a you, you, you don't have to physically physically be doing anything to get tired I can tell you where some of the most tiredness that you'll ever come and I think you'll agree with me is when your mind gets tired when your mind gets tired that's when you get weary that's when you really get drained because we can be spiritually drained we get spiritually drained. 
We get weary in our spirit. When we get where we're, we're, we're so tired, we get so tired in, in, in our spiritual life. And that's where the Israelites had become in their life. They had become so tired and weary with their spiritual life that they had, they had forsaken the Lord. They had forgot what it was for him to walk with them. We, we, we get to where we get, we get so tired and, and, and weary in and, and our spiritual life. And then we say, these steps that I used to make with God, helping me make these steps now that I don't even feel God around anymore. I, I don't even know if he hears my prayers anymore. I don't even know that if he even pays any attention to me anymore. I, I just don't, I don't think he is. I don't think he is because, you know, he just don't know my situation he doesn't know my situation. He doesn't know, but you know, he doesn't know I'm here physically walking in this situation. But Isaiah says, let me tell you, he knows your situation. And you can only hold out for a little bit of time. But I'm telling you about a God who is an everlasting God. I'm telling you about a God who's everlasting, that he never gets tired. He never gets tired. It doesn't matter if he tokes this speaker around for one hour, two hours. It doesn't matter if he has to pick up this church building and turn it around for a half a day. It doesn't matter if he has to pick up this world and hold the whole world in the palm of his hands. He's been doing it from the beginning, from the first day it was ever created. And I'll tell you, church, on the last day, he'll still have it right in his hands. Lord have mercy in other words this is what I'm telling you God created you and God will touch you and God will hear you and God will bless you you just stay in his will in the palm of his hand he is an everlasting God everlasting God church everlasting God they will walk and not be faint musicians y'all can start coming this way Got a special coming up for you. They will walk and not grow faint. You know, you can, you don't have to run to get tired. You can even get tired of walking. You can get tired of walking. Just by walking, I, I mean, you know, you can go ahead and walk around this church building one time and feel real good. You can go ahead and walk around this church building three times and walk and still feel good. You can go ahead and walk around this church building ten times and start to get a little weary. Start to get a little tired. Start to get a little tired. It really has an effect on you. You can go and walk. Fifteen miles and really be tired. When I'm talking about tired, church, I'm talking about weary. You may be here today, and you may have walked your whole entire life up to the point where you are right now. And you've never exchanged your life. In other words, you've never exchanged your strength for God's strength. You've tried to do all of this on your own. You see, we had a baptism just a little bit ago. And you saw from small children to grown adults. They got tired of walking in their strength. They got tired of doing things on their own. And they found another way. They found something else. In other words, they changed. They renewed. They exchanged their life. Exchanged their life as you stand to your feet. If you're willing today, You've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you're tired because you've walked. You've walked. You've walked. I say, I told Israel, I said, you're an everlasting God. He is an everlasting. He never gets tired. He never gets weary. He never gives out. 
All you got to do is say, God, I want to exchange my strength for your strength. I, I want to take, you see, I don't have enough strength, God. I, I don't have, I, I only got enough to last me just for a little while. But, but, I, but I come to know that, that, that your son Jesus has got a lot of strength. And he'll continue to go on. He's like the inner guys are bunny. Keep going and going and going and going and going and going. If you're willing to do that today, if I need to come and go get back in that pool of water with you, we fish go get in the pool. All I need you to do is say, I'm willing to follow Jesus. I repent of my sins. I, I, I want to live the life and walk the life that Jesus walked and lived. Will you step out today as they get started? Whatever your decision may be, come meet me at this altar. Come meet me at this altar.